Hello and welcome back. Quite a lot of problems with heating systems can actually be caused by controls or components rather than the boiler itself. And one of the more common failures can be related to zone valves. So today's video aims to give you some basic help and guidance when it comes to fault finding on a zone valve. Okay, so let's get into it. Please work safely with electrics. Electric shock can kill. Some of the following test methods involve exposed live electrical supplies. For anyone who isn't familiar with all the workings of a zone valve, I just thought I'd show a quick tear down of the valve. I have another video that also explains the basic concept of a zone valve, so that might be worth a look if you need a bit more detail about the zone valve itself. Firstly, when looking for a fault on a zone valve, it might be easier to think of the valve as having three separate parts that could potentially be at fault. There's the motor, the micro switch and the paddle or the ball inside the brass body of the valve. So let's run through some tests in that order. The motor itself needs a live and a neutral connection for it to operate. A live and neutral supplies are provided through the brown and blue cables that are attached to the valve. You can also see that the brown and blue cables attach directly to the two cables on the motor itself. Here I have the zone valve wires connected to a connector block and at the moment I only have the live, neutral and earth wires connected. I've also had an inline switch on the live supply to the zone valve to represent any controls being switched on or off. So our first method of fault finding would be to see if the motor was being provided with power. This can simply be done with a multimeter. Set the meter to alternating current and switch any relevant controls on. And of course in my case it's the inline switch. And see if there's mains voltage being applied across the live and neutral terminals. In my case 240 volts should be indicated as I live in the UK. And with the casing removed from the head of the zone valve I would also expect to see the synchronous motor being energised. As long as the live and neutral cables are live all the way to the motor then it's proven that you have power to the motor and you can eliminate the power supply as a fault. Looking at the micro switch you'll see that there's two wires coloured grey and orange. Grey is used for the live supply in, usually 240 volts, and orange is used as the live output. The two wires are connected together after the motor has energised and the micro switch is pressed by the attached lever. When the valve is in the off position these two wires are separated or open circuit. So it stands to reason then that if we have 240 volts on our live supply input, which is the grey wire, we should get 240 volts on the orange wire while the valve is being operated and the micro switch is being pressed. Firstly, I need to find a permanent power source for our grey cable. And it just so happens that I have a live terminal on the connector block, so I'll power down and wire it in there. Now, I don't fancy getting zapped with 240 volts from the orange wire either, so I'll put that on a spare terminal. Switching the power back on, once again I should be able to see the motor being energised, and with the grey and orange wires in place, I can test to see if there's 240 volts on both of those wires. To test this time, I need to put one of the multimeter probes on the grey wire, which we know is connected to live, and the other probe on the neutral terminal. This now shows us that we have 240 volts up to the micro switch. If I now change the multimeter probe to the orange wire terminal, I can see that the micro switch is working because 240 volts is passing through the micro switch. So I now know that the micro switch is working correctly. If everything seems fine electrically and you still not get any heating or heating flow, it's time to check the mechanical operation of the valve. The first way to check is if the valve has a manual lever, which is usually situated at the end of the valve head. When you move this, it will offer some resistance, but it should also move to the opposite side from its resting position. The lever is also attached by a return spring and it should smoothly return to its starting position when you let it go. You can also hold the lever in the manually open position by locating it into the lug provided. One final check is to power down and remove the head section. With the head removed you should be able to move the spindle without too much effort. This should indicate that the valve is okay mechanically. If it feels like you're wrestling a rusty bolt in a 1960s shed then it's probably jammed. So there you have it, a quick breakdown of how to fault find a zone valve. Check for power to the motor, test the micro switch output, test the valve body movement. 
Hopefully that gives you a solid method to either identify or eliminate a zone valve as the problem on your heating system. Ok, so drop a comment if you've got any questions or even if you want to share your zone valve horror story. Thanks for watching, I'm Pete Barry and I'll see you in the next video.